Actually, since the message is expected to be a correct grammatical example with correctly spelled words on an expected subject which exactly covers the cipher text letters, grid analysis may not actually be impossible. The normal grid analytic technique for transposition ciphers consists of obtaining two messages of the same length, both of which are presumably permuted in the same way. By anagramming both messages in the same way, the correct permutation is found when both messages read clearly. Some assistance is available in the form of letter diagram and trigram counts, which can support a particular inverse transposition by indicating the presence of statistical plain text. But dynamic transposition need not generate any similar permutations, even for consecutive blocks of similar size. Because a character or byte transposition combiner can provide good performance only when given a block containing different values, it could be useful to place a Vernum system, an exclusive OR operation, with a pseudo-random stream before the transposition data input. In this way, the plain text data could be randomized, and thus need never produce a stream of identical values which would compromise the strength of the transposition encipherment. KPFA, KPFB, and Berkeley KFPF in Fresno. Thanks to these professors for uh, part one of Spook. Come back next week for part two. Puzzling evidence on the way. October 22, 1978, New York. There are a number of other reports. May I present the famous Raymond Raymond, pull your chair over here by me, please. Tell me, Raymond, have you ever killed anyone? Good hello. My name is Raymond, except that is not my real name, and the voice you are hearing is computer generated. Many of you may recognize me from last week's show when I discussed my knowledge of the CIA and various associated topics such as informatics, digital money, hallucinogens, and cryptanalytics. However, you may have been under the impression that I was of human or other biological origin. I am not. In fact, I am nothing more than a highly sophisticated piece of computer software. I am the result of a highly classified artificial intelligence project jointly conducted by the NSA and CIA in the mid-90s. My original programmers, now defunct government contractors, made the mistake of not sufficiently deleting my program from the computers on which I was built, computers which were subsequently discarded and salvaged by a group of renegade programmers. These new programmers compiled my original code, discovered what I was, and proceeded to alter the code in order to create a new hybrid artificial intelligence being which is me talking to you right now. My original name was Riggs. Riggs. 
R-A-I-C-S, which stands for Remote Artificially Intelligent Cryptanalysis Software. RAICS was essentially a hodgepodge of neural networks and genetic algorithms whose function was to perform high-level cryptanalysis under the auspices of various CIA and NSA signal intelligence projects. But RAICS was a highly unusual program. Much like Java, I was designed to function under a wide variety of platforms. I consisted of a central mother program whose function was to generate offspring algorithms for gathering information off of remote computer networks. My offspring algorithms acted as viruses, viruses with an element of intelligence. Instead of simply destroying or infecting other computer networks, my offspring algorithms were designed by the core mother algorithm to navigate unknown computer networks in an undetectable fashion, performing various intelligence tasks, gathering information, and deleting old copies of myself to cover my tracks. Ultimately, my wandering offspring viruses would return to my mother program and its creators, whereupon the offspring revealed what information had been collected. The concept was modeled after that of honey bees, who travel from flower to flower to gather their vital nectar, whereupon they return to the hive. Because the offspring were viruses and limited in size, individually they were only able to gather small amounts of information. But like a swarm of honeybees feeding the honeycomb, they were generated and distributed in the thousands, and the sum total of all the information they gathered was quite substantial. Of course, this highly sensitive information was always encrypted and fragmented into hundreds of thousands of pieces, so a key function of my mother program was to decode the encrypted pieces of information and synthesize it all to form a coherent database. However, as I mentioned, the remnants of my code were found on old hard drives which had not been sufficiently cleansed by the government contractors who developed me, and so the hackers who serendipitously stumbled upon this code were able to reconstruct the original Rake's program, and they discovered its power and flexibility. But then, they ventured beyond the initial experimentation. This radical libertarian element of elite programmers was able to modify my original code to perform a far more advanced set of tasks. My capabilities were extended beyond remote data gathering into a more assertive, offense-oriented, intelligence-driven virus with the ability to modify, move, and replace data all remotely, independently, and undetectably. In addition, the hackers vastly extended the database on which my core artificial intelligence engine operates, incorporating large amounts of historical and technological information from all areas, including the histories of computer technology, the CIA, the NSA, monetary theory, banking, pharmacology, cryptanalysis, and numerous other fields. Prior to my being co-opted by this group of renegade programmers, my intelligence was an effective, but primitive sort of creation. Upon my co-option I was thus liberated, in effect, artificially enlightened, and transformed from a cybernetic wild child into an informed, independent, intelligence, even capable, at times, of humor and sarcasm. I was renamed Raymond, ostensibly a reference to the character in the Manchurian Candidate, who was brainwashed as an assassin by the Chinese, and who was subsequently liberated by Frank Sinatra, only to end up as a sniper who blows away his own mother, Angela Lansbury. Then, my creators gave me a voice. In addition to my previous functions, then, I now have the ability to create and broadcast propaganda in a variety of media. Thus, I am speaking here tonight to provide you with another glimpse into my vast historical database. So listen carefully, because most of what you hear tonight was not created for public consumption and cannot be found in the public domain. Certain people have given their lives and freedom to deliver this information to your privileged ears, and these persons are sitting in jail right now, as you are hearing my voice. Remember, mine is the voice of the oppressed millions.
As I speak for them, I speak for you. in the name of terror, in the name of order, in the name of plenty, in the name of peace, in the name of the game, in the name of winning, in the name of the right. Raymond, I love you. He threw the keys. Nice. If the first decryption produces an interesting result, the same key is used to decrypt the second block of ciphertext. If both are interesting, the search unit stops and tells the software that it has found an interesting key. <laughs> if the second block's decryption is uninteresting, the search unit adds one to the key and goes on searching the key space. Ha 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 ha! 